Hey, beautiful party people. Just a bit of a disclaimer. All of our audio noodles for the new mixer didn't show up, and then it turned out that we needed some new stuff. So it's kind of in a rigged mode. And on top of that, Jordan's Finlandian LTE internet, not that great. And of course, Space Britannia and Pedro, finicky internet on top of that. We've tried to process around most of the glitches to make it listenable. There's still one or two, all right, like 13 or 14 small issues throughout the tracks. We hope you can bear with that. Our apologies. Hashtag LGC cares. It will be better next week. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news reviews on twos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Steam has pre-compiled all the Vulcans, but not the AMD Vulcans. And Hitman has gone gold, and we're going to talk about whether or not it's worth it. Pro Team learns how to click export. MT learns how to rig a camcorder. And we uncover the sinister reason why IGN bought Humble. It's money. The, the answer is money. Always money. Valve catches up to Debian 8.9. The only surprise being that they're still bothering. And then we prove just how ugly helicopters really are and how bad we are at controlling them. Mm, sounds fun. I've been stoned here at LGC Actual. Um, this is apparently what uh, schizophrenia, paranoia, or whatever the hell it is feels like because I, I'm just waiting. We've somehow stitched together a show. And live stream. It's going to catch recording. on fire. It is. Uh, you know it's going to catch on fire. <laughs> it is what it is. Joined every week uh, by our man in Finlandia. It's where in the world is um, Sfangen, Sfangen, Sfago. I don't know. I don't know where the <laughs> hell Sfangen, San Diego. <laughs> listen, 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 sweetie, you tried. You tried. I did, man. <laughs> I'm not all here right now. It's not all my fault. I got my eyes on a lot of shit. What, what, what's up? But what's new on the island this week, people? Uh, well, uh, this particular island is going to uh, be running a an HDD raid with some Western Digital Blues. So that's going to be what I'm, well, it's uh, what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Mm. In a few hours. Ish. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I could say, where in the world is Carven San Diego? Mm. <laughs> Stone, Stone Diego even. But, you know, that, that, that's that's not my bit. That's your bit. Yeah, I'm I'm here. Uh, th this is this is the Airbnb. I'm I'm on the porno couch. Ben mm -hmm. took away the Brazzers logo because apparently it made OBS crash. I'm a little sad. But that being said, apparently I discovered today. There we go. Uh, fin fins do not like to give out change. I went to the grocery store. Uh, I needed money for a shopping cart, so I got, I went to the ATM, got a twenty euro bill, the change machine. Only, like would just spit out a ton of money, so I'm just like, hey, man, can you break this bill? No, we don't break bills. So now I have 20 euro coins. So the the, ne the next homeless person who comes up to me is like, hey, man, you got some change? It's like, motherfucker, change is all I got. And, um, you know, you know, chain, change is really the only constant when it comes to the state of uh, Linux support on, on Steam. Especially I'm trying like very hard, very hard right now to not make a smash mouth joke. <laughs> hey man, somebody once told me. Um, <laughs> the, the, the years start coming and they don't start coming. So Ben, you got a, you got a new mixer, but no no noodles. Well, I got noodles, and uh, we finally we got the mixer. I think that came in Tuesday. Or, yeah, Tuesday. Then we Friday we got some extra stuff, and then I realized that hey, we need more extra stuff. And if you paid attention yesterday to our wish list, which we got like shit we're about to buy list. You'll notice it got populated with a bunch of shit, and then you might have realized later in that afternoon a lot of shit just disappeared. I was like, "Fuck it!" I, I was like, "I got a credit card with a stupid limit on it. I'm gonna buy it." And we got that taken care of. So hopefully next week we're gonna be coming back with some superior bullshittery with this. This week it is just rigged to kind of hopefully work is what we're aiming for. We're, we're aiming to get right. through this. <laughs> Brought, brought to you by New Skype, because we just can't escape Microsoft. God damn it. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> but uh, one thing we definitely have not managed to escape in 273 continuous weeks, Jerry Baby's the horse. 
Yeah, we're, we 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 still continue to beat on that horse because there's still a horse to beat. It's the Steam Linux. Stop day. Indeed, and well, this kind of came out of nowhere for me because I genuinely thought Valve had stopped giving a damn about Linux too, and baby. their own Linux distro, SteamOS. But hey, uh, Jayvert, a uh, uh, Valve person, is still working on it. At least someone is. And uh, update, the beta update 2.135 uh, is now available. If you're running SteamOS beta, you can get the update, uh, which comes with basically what he says. It's been a while. This mainly catches SteamOS up with the security updates and Debian 8.9 updates, which is nice. Uh, they also have some game-specific stuff. What they did, uh, the they added some new UDEV rules from Feral to enable the steering wheel support for games like Red Auto Sport and uh, Dirt Rally and F1 2017. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Are, did they just admit that it wasn't working all that well until now? Well, <laughs> it's Valve, so Valve time. Well, it looks but, like yeah, a, a old flippity bitty bitty. Wait, were you going to say something about flat packs, buddy? Yeah, uh, old, old Flibbit is in the comments as usual, uh, being being his sexy self, mm -hmm. uh, re responding to a comment about uh, the potential for Steamos 3.0 based on what is it? Squeeze, stretch, whatever Toy Story character is the latest version of um, Debian, mainly because that comes with uh, stretch. Okay, that comes with uh, flat pack support. Um, and uh, Flibbit throws in his two cents. He says it would be nice to have a preview of 3.0 for developers so that they can update shit to newer libraries. And also the whole uh, the uh, the whole flat pack support thing, which would make packaging and distributing apps on uh, CMOS really really convenient because mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about a bunch of library mismatches. You just basically throw your entire build with all the dependencies in a flat pack container, ship it off, and away you go. That would be pretty nice. Uh, mm -hmm. So hope hopefully Flibbit will be the driver on that. Hope actually that's not true. Hopefully someone else other than Flibbit will be the driver on that because that guy's taken on a lot on his own. He oh, absolutely yeah. is, man. Hey, man, on that Brewmaster, you might be able to uh, launch Steam Plant Beta. <laughs> it's a new business. It's the new hot sauce. Uh, really, not a whole lot in this, but something that is of note: uh, the support automatically download precompiled GPU shaders. For Vulkan, um, AMD hardware on Windows is not currently supported, uh, or a lot of other places. They fixed a memory leak, and they did some stuff with the input. I didn't really get a chance to read over that. Oh, and here's the one, one that Linux it, fix. Th th one. This you you would genuinely think this this was this was it. This is one thing that would fix all of uh, Steam on Linux, according to our uh, Linux underscore gaming. You can create your desktop link and application menu shortcuts for your desktop. So, yeah, see, so this is a, one of the bugs I've been tracking on the uh, Steam for Linux GitHub, what Valve set up so people could uh, report bugs. And this is one of them, yes, but this is perhaps the least disruptive of the bugs I'm tracking. There's the shift acting like caps lock bug, there's the um. The oh, I don't know, maybe the whole overlay freezing the game the moment you open it or like five seconds later. That's a pretty big noop, and they still haven't fixed it. There are a few others, and again, this was probably the least disruptive. Oh, well, well, Pe Pe Pedro, Pedro, you 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 need to you need to spend more money on VR games, and then people will pay attention to you on. on oh, Linux. isn't that right, Pierre Loup Griffet? Yeah, and, but uh, as, as for the Steam input stuff, they added, um, thanks to the Steam hardware survey, something useful actually came out of it. Uh, they have a bunch of third-party controllers that are now supported under Steam input. So if you have a bunch of random, you know, the, the, the second player controllers that you give to your cousin or your brother or whatever, because you, you got the nice first-party controller. Uh, those, all, those are also all supported via Steam inputs. But where are the DDR pads, man? Um, what, I don't know, what, man. Uh, I mean, you should definitely what, put it in and be like, yo, where, where's my Nintendo PowerPad support? Yeah, uh, you can also uh, Steam uh, input your Hori Arcade sticks. So, you know, 
for you know that Street Fighter game that never came on Linux. Mm -hmm. you could maybe get it working. One feature I'd really like to see them add though for the Steam input though is just make the um, make the configurator available just through the regular S overlay because it's a pain in the butt to go back and forth between uh, just the Steam clients. Uh, and the game, especially especially because you can get the Steam uh, input uh, stuff through the big picture mode overlay, which is an extra level of fuck you. But um, it is what it is. Progress is slow moving, but it is progress. <laughs> Speaking of which, how about open source games that show up on Steam every once in a while? Yeah, uh, show up on Steam and for a price. Not the price of free, but an actual price tag that they have going on. So this is Alien Arena. Chances are, if you've been on Linux for a while, you know what it is. You probably played it. But this one is Warriors of Mars. And, well, as much as I don't feel like paying money for another Quake 3 engine-based first-person arena shooter, because we have, you know, a very big shortage of those on Linux. <laughs> um, this one does look good, and I don't, uh, I don't remember the free open source version looking this good. Maybe they changed it in a while. Admittedly, it's been a few years since I last touched it, but it is, uh, it is on Steam now, and it costs uh, six pounds ninety nine. So I'm guessing around ten ish euros, ten ish bucks. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it looks all right, but I kind of sit back and I thought about it and I was like, hmm, wait a minute. Uh, do, I, do I really want to pay nine ninety nine for something that I used to play ad nauseum and kind of left? And I don't know how the community is going. It doesn't seem like it's uh, got like negative reviews or anything. A lot of people seem to like it and I definitely want to support them. But mm -hmm. my, 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 my question which I think is legitimate. What does this version get me versus the free version? Probably well, some enhanced like, RSS. Um, at, at the very least, it provides some means of support for the community maintaining it. Because I mean, like Alien Arena has always been this competent first-person shooter. I've always, I've always thought that it would be a good idea to start adding sort of a pay-what-you-want option for open-source games on Steam, because then you have an avenue to actually, mm -hmm. you know, fund the game and actually incentivize people to continue development on these things and also leverage a lot of the multiplayer features that steam has to offer. Um, it would be really, really nice if they could have some sort of open source hook into the steam multiplayer thing. So you could right click join stuff. Uh, but it's alien arena, man, you've played it. You can yum install it or apt get install it or Pac-Man oh, yeah. SYU it or download it from BSD ports because BSD ports is still maintained and hippie Jake. Yes. I'm aware you can edit the controller profile without big picture mode, but you need to actually well, do it through the steam. One thing I think Maddie brought game. up a really good point is like maybe nine 99 is worth it just for the convenience fee, especially if you're an active player of alien arena. This, yeah. this 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 is true. You know, I mean, just of, for the of convenience. Course, if you are a new player to Alien Arena, you're not going to have a very good time because the people who play that game regularly are the people who only play that game regularly. They, they really so, do like it. What engine yeah, yeah, is yeah. Alien Arena on? I think it's I it's I Quake Three. Is it? Uh, it's one of the Quake Three based engines. There's tons of them now <laughs> send, us, send us some hate mail because i'm pretty yeah. sure it's I, I i have some sneaking suspicion that it isn't actually quake 3 based and it's just its own game but i don't know speaking of uh speaking of of um val of paying a lot of money for not a lot hitman hey man it's out it's been out and uh feral did a good job with it uh as far as making it run but you have the game of the year edition because you totally didn't buy the Hitman Complete Everything edition only to have them come out with the Game of the Year edition. Kind of a dick move. Not Feral's fault at all. They're just in charge of porting this business. It does include a new campaign, Patient Zero. I played around in that just for a little bit to um, see what the business was all about and didn't hate it. I mean, it wasn't horrible or anything like that, but... Even on the Ryzen 7 1700 with a 980. Pedro, I don't know if you got a chance. Uh, it still kind of runs like a little bit of butt. No, but I will get a chance at the moment I get those hard drives installed because I'm going to install all of my Steam games. Uh, but yeah, 
uh, I did ask you earlier in the week, does it run any better? And you said, yeah, no. Still runs a bit like ours. Mm. <laughs> so, the, so one one thing to note: this is the first release that um, I forget I forget what it's called. But after their little uh, divorce from Squeenix, mm-hmm. uh, this this is the first release from these guys saying they want to keep the Hitman IP alive. And so they released a game of the year edition to, too. Yeah. So they 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 want your money so they can continue to pump out games. So I can I can definitely see bot trying to support them from that angle. That said, if you already own Hitman or some version of it, uh, there's not a lot of value add in this package to justify uh, paying the full price, the iron price for it. Well, I mean, it does do the thing if it kind of calculates what you already have. And if you have most of the episodes and the DLC and stuff like that, it'll just like, okay, well, if you just want patient zero, you yeah, can. Yeah, if, if it's only the teeny tiny bits of DLC that you don't have already it mm-hmm. will be much cheaper for you because if you're buying the full pack even at 20 percent off that's 43 pounds 83 um, shillings well yeah well you know speaking of a game that actually supports vulcan in prime time uh serious sim 3 vr bfe is out uh they click the export button for vr the magical checkbox <laughs> Um, so this is actually kind of interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see how this will turn out because apparently this will cross play with uh, fusion. And because we have one vibe equipped leprechaun at the moment, I want to, I want to see how, uh, how this stacks up. Uh, I also, I also want to see a, how empty <laughs> just sort of darts around the room. Star Wars kid style with, with I want the, a camera on empty. Are you so kidding me? Now together. the only thing I want to see is the vibe equipped leprechaun short. <laughs> absolutely um but they added uh, they added dual wielding and teleportation to this as um standard crow team vr stuff do so i'm not really sure how this will affect uh, game balance at all but it's cool it's out if you have if you're the if you're one of the minuscule number of linux users who has a vr headset uh this will work because crow team is awesome definitely check this out uh I mean, I hate BFE, but you know they're doing good work. You got you got to you got to throw them a bone here somewhere. Well, I mean, I think it's uh, probably definitely worth it because you're you're absolutely starved if you made the investment. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you're looking for some actual games on VR. Well, Crow Team are actually putting out games. They are instead and, of tech demos. Uh, they're the, their favorite uh, Croatian psychopaths, and it, yep. it's currently on sale right now, isn't it? couple of bucks off yeah it's 10 percent off uh if you want to buy like the full uh crow team vr bundle it's 51 percent off Hmm. you're still dropping a sizable chunk that's like 85 bucks or 73 pounds so yeah that's that's significant (laughs) well you know uh dude walked in the first time master wasn't pleased so he's back again with some more manos Oh yes, this is hand of fate to master is is not pleased. In case you uh, haven't been paying attention, this is Menos too, the hand of fate too. Um, no, they so they've added a couple more mission types, um, more cards, they and they've more support, characters. Yeah, the, some more characters, and they uh, supposedly tightened up the combat system, which was kind of our major complaint. I had to go back and to our hand of fate review because I had no recollection of my thoughts about this game because we just get so much crap. Um, but yeah, it basically, um, if you, if you want that sort of Batman Arkham, uh, style combat, you got this and shadow Hordor. That, those are, those are your two options. So hopefully the, hopefully they actually do have a little less monotonous combat. They've added a bunch of additional weapon types. They have some dual wielding for stuff like daggers. So it will be nice to, uh, if they send us some keys to give this another check. I actually like the deck building aspect of this game. Basically mm-hmm. everything but the combat I liked about the original Hand of Fate. So hopefully if they get that, uh, if they get that sorted, um, it should make for something remotely interesting. Well, I'd really like yeah. to throw that in because that, that was, the combat was so, I didn't really like the card aspect, and, but you know, it did have the combat. It's like, okay, maybe I'll like that. It was dog shit. <laughs> I mean, laughably <laughs> bad. And this, they said everything's better. Yeah, Everyone... and uh, the big problem with the combat on the first one was that every swing you took, it, it felt like it had no weight behind it. Mm-hmm. And this one, they added that little freeze frame. Whenever you hit something, there's that little freeze frame that just adds the uh, adds a genuine feel of 
heaviness to your attacks. There's a bit of weight behind each punch and each swing of every weapon. And like Jordan already mentioned, there's a bunch of new weapon types. You can dual wield, you can use two-handed weapons. You can still use the old uh, single-handed weapon and shield. Uh, but yeah, no, I did beat the first one. It was a bitch. And afterwards, the game told me I could now play the Infinity Mode without any restrictions on the cards. I... I lost a few hours to that. It was admittedly very fun, but it, after a while, okay, you could just keep on playing indefinitely, but it doesn't really have all that much going for it the moment you finish the story. This one, the story is a hell of a lot bigger. And yeah, outside of the combat, I really liked everything uh, on the first game. So fixing that, probably going to put this one up for, you know, game of the year contender for me. Uh, mm-hmm. kind, kind of a little bit of excited about it what's this thing going to mm-hmm. run you it will run you over here in the space britannia 2370 pounds mm-hmm. so uh it's ten, it's, ten, it's 10 percent off now uh yeah it's uh, 25 euro so it's going to be something like 35 canadian yeah 35 canadian 30 bucks ish so yeah <laughs> All right, definitely good time. Uh, last, nowhere near last act. We got a one more, so I guess this yes, would be our penultimate. The penultimate, <laughs> the penultimate just means second to last. You pretentious birds. Fuck. We talked about this. <laughs> it's helicopters. You fly around. You blow people up. They got a bit of an update. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, this is basically they're still rebalancing, and we're, we're going to be talking about this in the chairquisition. But you can now turn without slowing down quote as much and some minor network improvements we did play this thursday and w- w- once attempted we, to <laughs> once, w- once we decoded we fumbled around once we thursday, decoded yes. the menu it was a little bit better and um, there's some new stuff in here if you haven't heard about it uh we will definitely be talking about this later in the show currently 1999 a lot of people seem to like it unfortunately um a lot of people don't seem to play it. I uh, don't want to give any spoilers, but uh, I mean, we were able to connect without any issues, right? Mostly. Well, we had Whoa. to kind of track down where exactly your game was so we could join it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... we, 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 had, we had to decipher the UI. <laughs> and once you get that down, it's not terrible yeah. to get into a multiplayer game per se. But again, stay tuned for the chair position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lots no, stick stuff, around. Man. There'll be chairs. Okay, now let's get out of here on this note. All right, uh, everyone's favorite punching bag, uh, Ike Doherty. Uh, he has an update for the LSI Linux Steam integration with the ru- not point six with runtime snaps. So this, uh, I I really like um, th- this particular update because it addresses an issue that I have run into periodically on the Fedoras, uh, vis-a-vis the vendored libcurl and libssl. Um, uh, cause some games, especially Feral, will statically link against their Ubuntu or whatever libcurl or libssl, which means that you have to, uh, you have to do some hackery in order to get the game running or occasionally just install Ubuntu on a spare SSD that you have <laughs> lying around that is now just collecting dust in my box. Uh, that said, um, they have they have some improvements uh, additionally for uh, transmuting vendor specific libraries like uh, SDL, uh, libcurl as mentioned before, and so on and uh, x264. So you can, um, regardless of what version you have, it should work theoretically. They have a snap as well because you know snap is the future. Well, Ike seems to think so, anyways. So you can just get this up and running real quick, like on your system if it has the snap support. I like the version name too, Euro Wizard Harry. <laughs> yeah, the thing that they did with the snaps was actually really interesting for me because they don't just include the Linux Steam integration, they also include the Steam client and the Steam runtime, their own uh, optimized version of the Steam runtime. So you're not depending on Valve's stupidly outdated libraries, which is good. And it's all in a single self-contained snap package. And with the uh, Linux Steam integration bit, it automatically captures all of the library requests that any game is making, and it intercepts those, and it redirects them to the Solus um, or their snap version of the runtime that is included. 
which are more up to date and they actually do fix quite a few bugs, especially in the client. Uh, if you've ever tried to play a full screen video from the Steam client, I don't know why you would, but if you did, you probably realize that it crashed. It just crashed the client. Well, it doesn't do that anymore. And they're also improving the runtime libraries with certain specific flags, which are now supported by current processors. I actually saw this earlier on Google+. Plus. Ike was saying that um, the glibc included in the um, runtime that's going into the stab now supports AVX2 directly, natively, so you can get hardware support for the AVX2 extension if your processor supports it. If it doesn't, well, you're still running in software mode, so that's going to not help you a whole lot. But if you have a Haswell or a newer Intel processor, or if you have an excavator or Ryzen AMD processor, you can have those hardware accelerated and the games that make use of that extension will run so much better. So, hey. Uh, one, 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 one other thing too is, uh, this might trip some people up, so just an FYI, they got rid of the save button, so now it will write your settings on close. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you click the buttons, it won't apply them until you actually close the little GUI thing that they have. Well, just, one thing uh, I'd like to ask up. about this, so you've, at version 9.6, uh, if you're currently running, say, an Arch or even a Ubuntu, I'm running 17.10, it, would it be worth investigating installing this over just your regular package? Giggity. Yeah. If you have uh, Snap support enabled, by all means, install the Snap version instead. But it is still an alpha, so you need to keep that in mind. It's not baked yet. Admittedly, uh, there is a link in the show notes for the Google Plus collection that Joshua Strobel has been posting uh, with as many games as he has. He's been trying them all and showing that, hey, they work. And uh, there was an issue with Vulcan games because, well, Lib Vulcan was throwing a hissy fit because of the snaps. That's been fixed. So that's going in on the very next release. But yeah, no. Just including the Steam client, the runtime, and the Steam integration for the intercepts, that is going to knock shit out of the park. Now, one, 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 thing, one thing I wanted to just bring up before we go to break is, um, because you are fucking with libraries, will uh, VAC catch this and ban your ass? That's a good question. Hmm. I, I, Ike, Ike, get back to us. Um, mm -hmm. Coming up next... We talk about selling out, which basically means if you make money in the entertainment business, you have sold out. Well, 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 it's that time of the show where we get to thank you, the lovely people who keep throwing money at our heads and say, you keep doing that. You keep dancing. You dance, monkey, you dance. Uh, I just kind of wanted to keep uh, on that image of Pedro just throwing the Hitler salute. Just to issue a correction from uh, from the previous segment, Ike did uh, speak up in chat realm after we cut out. Apparently LSI does not trigger VAC so far. Anyways, um, for those... And, you know, I Ike's one of these awesome people who uh, continually gives us money over and over and over again. And if you want to be like him and have make your own Linux distribution and hang punching bags behind you, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com slash support the show. There's a bunch of links there. You can click on them. Keep clicking on links until you get prompted to enter a credit card number. Enter a credit card number. I'm sure that nothing nefarious will happen after the fact. I mean, what are we, Equifax? Anyways, and if you want to have a better way to support us, you can also check out patreon.com slash linuxgamecast, where all the cool kids go for extra cool Linux Gamecast stuff like exclusive access or timed exclusive access to videos, uh, show note access, Discord access, and all other sorts of neat crap that happens. Yeah, the Humble Simulator City Skyline Bundle. That's what we're talking about. Um, yeah. But uh, we're, we're, I think we're currently at 200, um, 200 a show, which oh, still means shit. that Something I got to... That means you're back in swing. Yeah, we, we, dro we dropped down a little bit. We 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 dropped we dropped down, but we came back up. So back when when I'm back in Toronto, we're back to doing the serious song with Sandy, myself, sometimes Mir, sometimes Ben. Check that out Thursdays. But you know, 
weekly streams like uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are brought to you by the awesome people at Patreon. So if you want to continue funding that nightmare fuel, making us give up our personal lives to spend time with you, you can definitely check that out. But we also have an Amazon wish list that uh, people occasionally buy stuff from. And um, the, the people who do get to go on the fuck wall as beheld by Frank over there. Look at him. He's gorgeous. Uh, maybe, maybe he, he needs to eat a sandwich or two. Looks way too happy. He yeah, is, man. He, he, he's, he's, he's it, it, anorexia, man. It warps the mind. <laughs> um, but we, we got, we got some Patreons. We got to thank. We got to thank uh, Yishan and uh, M. Langston for kicking in some money. They are awesome, awesome human beings who enable us to come to you. Uh, what is it, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and occasionally Sundays if there's Doctor Who on for. Uh, just, just to hang out with you guys and talk know, about them. And, and definitely with the play some uh, video games. Like pre pre shows in, we're going to be doing the game of Hugh. The game of Hugh. All right. The I game like of that. Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to talk about that one TNG episode it's about that Borg kind guy. Of brilliant. If you've been on the fence, so is it uh, Hugh Laurie or Hugh Jackman? Okay. Hugh better <laughs> shut your goddamn mouth, Pedro. But get access off. to all that fun stuff uh, if you like that. We love you. Uh, thanks so hard. Great time to become a patron because I just spent a gang load of fucking money, son. And um, yeah, that's the thing. But um, that's cool. Uh, what else? Uh, that, that's it. We're, we're done shilling. Go check out uh, Lutris from Frenchie. He, he's on Frank's Bowl. And I always want to give that a shout out. And Solus. So, and um, so. Go, go. I was just going to yeah. say, speaking of, speaking of selling out. Well, someone sold out uh, last week, a couple of weeks back, something like that. But we'll get to that. This is actually another Humble Bundle. So this one uh, includes Rebuild 3, Simple Planes, Out of the Park Baseball. Um, let's see. Mad Games Tycoon, Play Gink, Train Simulator, and City Skylines Deluxe Edition. Only a few of those are available for Linux, which... It's unfortunate, but hey, that's the reality we have to deal with. And now that Humble's been bought by IGN, well, I'm guessing we're going to see more of those coming our way. So, um, so the, the the two games of value really here are Plague Inc. and City Skylines, because Plague Inc. was actually pretty fun just to watch your disease, you know, take over the world. I didn't mind the funk, and the mm -hmm. funk infected everyone and drove them to funky madness and killed everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Bootsy Collins. And I, in my opinion, this is a safe one to pass up. Uh, yeah, it really boiled down to it's like, oh, look, here's a bundle with city skylines. It's $10. It's like, yep, nope, mm -mm, don't. Nah, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Still not feeling mm -mm. that. I don't know why. I'm not huge into simulations. And I used to play yep. the fuck and or all out of SimCity 2000 on the Mac. Um, I liked Theme Hospital, but that was it. The Plague one, I think I have that on Android. That sound. Yeah, I think I have that one on Android yeah. too. <laughs> I, I got that at some point in some bundle or mobile bundle or something. Yeah. And everything else uh, wasn't a huge fan of. So if that's it, it's shovel, thing, It's shovelware. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part. Why, why, why do you think? Uh, oh, and you can get 10% off your humble mon monthly bundle or something like that. Because oh, yeah. Holy fuck, yeah, oh, they're who, still trying who, to show who pays for either. Th right. Who pays for that, seriously? I don't know, but why uh, why, why do you think we're seeing a slight decline? In, um, but I do want to think, like, Humble, you did a good job with your child display, with your charity thing. You were doing that today. Mm -hmm. uh, good on you, because they do do good work. But someone kind of looked back into this business and uh, had some questions about why, Bundle? Why? Yeah, uh, so this is from Gone with the Wind. Uh, you can find the links to all this stuff in our show notes. And he raises an interesting point. Whoa. Effectively, uh, in, in, in addition to sort of the similar vertical integration that IGN and Humble have uh, in common, uh, one thing that uh, IGN gets out of this is purchasing data. Um, because, as you know, we live in a Norwellian state where mm -hmm. everything you do is tracked by every single freaking corporate interest unless you install a privacy voucher, which I highly recommend you do. But that said... Uh, because uh, Humble is tracking your purchases um, and tracking what kind of stuff you're interested in, IGN can use this to provide better targeted ads at you. 
And that, that, that is the high and low point of this article. And it's something I really didn't consider at all uh, when this originally came up. And it's a very valid point. The fact that IGN is uh, primarily an ad- advertisement company. They, they, make, uh, they make game reviews and whatnot. But they're, they're real, they're real mo- their real reason to exist is to sell you things. Mm-hmm. So they've purchased a ton of br- purchasing and browsing history. They're going to target um, – they're, they're going to – if you're going to log on to IGN, they're going to target more ads at you, better targeted ads. And so uh, the moral of the story here is uh, don't read IGN. But uh, if you're already here, you probably don't do that already. But shut up. <laughs> it's um, – it's – well, everyone's been mentioning that this is a conflict of interest for IGN because they provide game reviews. And at the same time, they own – a game store Mm -hmm. because yes, that's what humble is. Uh, They may have started with the best of intentions and being, you know, the charity thing, the doing bundles for charity. And, and to be fair, they get to write off the charitable donations. You do not. Yep. And another thing you don't get to do is opt out of that data collection. If say you're using humble to, Let's say you buy a specific bundle and then you buy another one that, which has very similar games. Now there is a connection and IGN is going to use that to track your likings as the case may be and they will target those ads directly at you. Well, if you're like me and you have uBlock Origin installed and you don't have anything whitelisted outside of like YouTube, well, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of ads coming from IGN, but a lot of people still don't. So there is no actual implemented way for you to opt out of that data collection because Umble in their end user license agreement, they do not. They specifically say that they do not honor third party um, ways of basically removing yourself from the data collection. So right. So install so moral of the story, install privacy badger, don't read IGN. Well also, I mean when IGN walked into Humble and all this broke, did anyone out there think that IGN was just doing this out of the goodness of their fuck mothering heart? No. Of course not. Right. They saw a business opportunity and they fucking took it. Mm-hmm. And the guys at Humble, the guys Money. and gals, uh, they sit back yep. and they were thinking, hey, we want to do s- this next level shit and um yeah it, it's going to get financed and you know sometimes that that, that price is uh, baby hands so <laughs> well, <Carl! laughs> you, you know you know what they say Whitey, whitey's gotta pay um but you know who doesn't charge you access for their stuff good hey man something Ooh. we've heard a lot about lately good three vr and ar it's like what the holy hell vr you got my interest right there open source engine it's great it needs a lot more people using it. Then they're throwing this AR support in there. That's really the future. Not um, VR. This is Alpha 2 releases, the AR VR server architecture. Uh, it's all going to be possible in Godot right now. Um, Open VR is now supported in Godot through the GDN native module. But um, in the next release, the 3.0, AR is probably not going to be supported, but this is a pretty fun read straight from the horse's mouth as one might say and it so it, it, well here's the thing doesn't it seem like just in the last two maybe three months like development on Godot has just they did get a couple of thousand bucks from Microsoft yeah plus plus they, plus they do have that patreon. Um, but so my, my understanding is, cause I, I, I skimmed the article a little bit. I didn't give it a proper dissection, but they actually implement a separate server on top of the game that actually handles, um, sort of headset tracking and object tracking, and then just feeds it back to the Godot engine so that, uh, it provides an object that you can manipulate within the engine. This is, this is correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seems to be, although I did have one question, what's that going to do for the latency? Mm. No, no idea. Uh, the yeah. the other the the other point uh, point of contention I had is because um, and we we've discussed this ad nauseum and yes, Godot has a legitimate reason to stick with OpenGL three point one, but when you're doing the VR, you maybe uh, you maybe want the extra horsepower that the Vulcans can provide. So I'm curious as well uh, about how um, how well it, this will actually work. 
it doesn't. Uh, in, in well, practice. one of the things I'm definitely thinking about with that is yeah. with mobile devices right now, when you're talking about AR, you basically have the latest iPhone and there's a Google phone with enough horsepower right. to do AR. So, Yeah, and there's one thing they mentioned with the whole VR and AR thing is that there is a Windows 64-bit build of Godot that has that enabled, uh, but there is no Linux version. Um, uh, according to him, he says, the module has been successfully tested on Windows as Linux, but I only have access to a Windows machine. I'm not able to provide Linux builds at this time. I do not know anyone with a capable Mac hardware. Ha ha, where have we, where have we heard of that one before? Everywhere. And, yeah, and an HTC 5. So it isn't known at this time if the module will work on Mac OS X. So you don't get a Linux build right now because the developer just can't. Uh, but it supposedly it works on Linux, supposedly. Hmm. Theor theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> theoretically. Uh, hey, man. But it, but listen, listen you, you, you've heard of the shocker. It's like this. I, I per personally, I prefer the spocker, but um, yes, <laughs> uh, apparently they've re-architected a little bit. Oh, a little bit. So you may remember a while back, there was a bit of a demo and a Kickstarter going for the System Shock remake, and they were using Unity, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, now, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now they are actually using Unreal. They have a little bit of a vertical slice uh, that they're working on in Unreal, but you cannot download it. And I know what you're saying is like, oh, but there's a there's no demo available, and you're talking about a Kickstarter. This Kickstarter is done. Okay, this is just an update for the people who did uh, back the project, and they did get 1.33 million. Uh, from the Kickstarter that they ran, so I'm guessing this will probably come out in about five years' time. -ish. That was a prediction, right? <laughs> that, that 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 was that was my prediction, Pedro. Thank you for cribbing my notes exactly. Yeah, um, I hadn't done that in a while. <laughs> yeah, but um, this, this is they they dropped their original demo, um, mm -hmm. which actually ran reasonably well for a Unity game, considering how pretty it looked. Um, but I'm always skeptical when uh, when companies decide that they want to switch engines mid development. I, I get that maybe for something of this scale, Unity is probably not the best option, and Unreal Engine 4 is fairly robust. They're still promising mm -hmm. Linux support and whatnot. Um, but now we're 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 gonna wait on this vertical slice to see if uh, they can pull off what they say they can. Apparently, they had to they had to rewrite a bunch of um a, a re they had to rewrite a bunch of stuff. Uh, because Unity handles things differently than um, Unreal Engine. We'll mm. see how that ultimately turns out. But yeah, I'm not expecting this game to become anywhere near playable within like the realm of, say, five, six years. Oh, hell yeah. no. Um, I, I think we might oh, say I, that. I, I, are, and are they, are they going to go on to... Um, are they going to try and get alternate funding via something like Patreon? Or I guess there's no more Steam early... <laughs> There's no more Steam Early Access. Steam Direct, whatever the hell you want to call it. You'll probably um, see it on Steam Direct. Um, they might still be fishing around for a publisher. Mm -hmm. So, But you also yeah. got to look at going to Unreal Engine 4 usually is a good and weather vein of a company also planning to head to Xbox and PlayStation. <laughs> so, But what about the Switch? <laughs> Uh, they do say that the Switch and other mobile platforms are not off the table yet, but uh, yeah. Uh, right now, in theory, I the idea of a modern system shock sounds appealing. Then, you know, you take a step back and you look at the game industry as a whole and the modern reinterpretations of old games that have been coming out have been less than spectacular, and all of a sudden, I'm not too thrilled anymore. So remains to be seen what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good times yeah. had by all. Um, you know, I've never played this game, but damn, people fucking cult love it. And um, I didn't know about this. Mm -hmm. It was kind of interesting to see it show up. Yeah, uh, you got to get your kicks on uh, Route 76. Uh, so this is um, Open 76. It is the... Uh, open source implementation of uh, Interstate 76 done on Unity. And 
Yeah, apparently uh, the original what what piqued my interest while I was doing a little research into this was apparently the original game was based on uh, the Mech Warrior Two engine. To which I thought, you know what, it would be really cool if we got a Mech Warrior Two sort engine port that you can play some <laughs> Mech Warrior natively on Linux. That said, they had completely gutted the Mech Warrior engine to make this. And, mm-hmm. and what 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 this is is like a demolition derby style game where you drive around, or it's, it's kind of like a proto Mad Max. You drive around and try to murder other drivers on the road. So basically, my Monday morning commute. Um, but uh, there there there's a fairly large delta in between the original Mech Warrior Two engine and the one that this is using. But again, it's an it's another one of these game preservation efforts, and I'm always 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 100 percent behind them well, because it allows it allows about these the games to exist. The decision to levels. put it in Unity was because I was reading it, the guys like yeah I've been cocking about with this for a little while, and he's like I finally decided to try to make it a thing. Mm-hmm. And I guess that what is that just uh, just stick with what you know and it's uh, not only that but the fact that Unity is baby's first engine and it comes with a lot of stuff already baked in like say you want to have some rudimentary VR support Unity does that well, you want uh, to have yeah I, 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 well it's, it's kind of like the whole Daggerfall reimplementation of in Unity it's like why yeah. why why Unity why why not just use Godot or something. It's an engine that makes all the low-level stuff stupidly easy for you. And, yeah, it's it's there, it's available, it's free, uh, unless you make however much money and then you have to start paying them. Uh, but I like it. I like this idea. I played a lot of Interstate 76. I played a lot more of Interstate 82. I'm one of those people that prefers uh, Interstate 82 because, let's face it, it was just a better game. It you hipster. Everything. You <laughs> fucking hipster. It's not uh, underground. Uh, it was kind uh, of fascinating uh, to read back that he used a lot of the Wayback Machine that people had initially started figuring out with the file formats and ways to extract textures and all that fun stuff. And that yeah, was kind of interesting, but mm-hmm. it, it's good to see. And it's still being worked on. What were you saying, Jerry, baby? Uh, I was going to say two things. Uh, num- number one, apparently we have uh, this game to blame for the atomic ass's presence in Shad Realm, mm. and also, um, and also, uh, one one thing that Unity does buy is because it has a fairly wide user base. Um, it makes contributing a little easier because it's Babby's first engine, right? Anyone yep. can sort of pick it up and start hacking away at it. So that is definitely a thing. But then. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want I want you to answer me a question. What what's what's one thing that I do on a regular basis that turns you on? So our next story is couple <laughs> quest. Um <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that is that is literally one of the screenshots. I I, I, I am not bullshitting you. This is this is a sexy couples card game written in Godot. Uh that's really all I can say about it. Um, other than I smell some after show bait. Hey man, what do you uh, mean? The, the, the couple's quest has been rewrited in GD script using Godot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Add your own mod ool with tasks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, l- l- listen you can make fun of this guy's grammar all you want you're not answering my goddamn question what do i do that turns you on then <laughs> so it seems like a competently done game created with the godot engine um describe <laughs> something your yes, partner does uh, that really turns you on allow me to read the last one prepare and bring one night partner to bed her favorite delicacy Feed her first spoon, then with your fingers, and then your mouth. So you're basically a bird regurgitating into her mouth at that point. You know, that's really sexy. Next week, and we're it. probably going to be playing the <laughs> shit out of some of this because this is this is this is too good. Once we get our audio chain set up, so we're not dealing with this bullshittery. The the yeah, I agree with you, Jordan. Um, the the yeah, this is. Uh, <laughs> I I just love I love the wording of this question too. Because, um, are are you supposed to like cook the night partner? What is a night partner? <laughs> I have no idea. It's a one night partner. You know, the whole night, I guess. <laughs> the whole. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's a thing. It's open source. You can compile this. If if you if you are a married couple, 
or maybe, maybe just in a committed relationship and you uh, need a laugh because you're, I don't know, you're, man. You're, I'm kind of thinking like, the um, well, Mike G. Was like, yeah, maybe maybe you go to your bunk and you're like, uh, do doing your thing, and like somebody shows up, like what, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm night partner. <laughs> I'm your one night partner. <laughs> no, it, it, it basically just breaks out into the Nightman song from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Let's 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 put a bow on this. We were we were joking before about the Nintendo Switch. Someone has decided that he wanted to make his own, and so this is from Hackaday. Links to all this crap in our show notes. Uh, this is a 3D printed um, Switch-like thing based on a Raspberry Pi. There's a little microcontroller in there that handles all the controller inputs that submits to the GPIO. Uh, it's running RetroPie and the emulation station, and it is. It's basically just a portable console. Eat, eat your heart out, Schmuck Zero. Someone did this and actually got a workable prototype. I was about to say, well, what does this uh, have in common with the Smash Zero? It's like nothing, because this actually exists. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so so all, all, all the schematics are up there. It's entirely ra- entirely Raspberry Pi based. Though to be fair, this is not a this is more of a Wii U than a Switch because you can't separate the controller sides from mm-hmm. the unit. Um, the switch also has some beefier hardware with that big ass Tegra chip in there. That said, it is a really cool DIY project. If you want to just sort of a game gear S console, you can bring on the go, play some uh, games on your Pi three or whatever. This is totally a way to go about doing that. And like, I, like I said, Oh, um, uh, one, one of the really cool things is this guy is working on setting up some wicked, nasty keyboard cord or a uh, keypad cord setups. So if you want to change settings, you don't have to actually plug in a USB keyboard. You can uh, just do the up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start, select, insert penis here. And you'll eventually be able to get to um, whatever settings you want. Like I said, still a better love story than the Schmuck Zero. Who threw that oh, in? Yeah. Was and it Steve-O? Or you? Yeah, steve is to blame for this one. Yes, he is. And uh, to uh, throw some bonus soda at it, it'll play more games than the Switch does right now. So, hey. Uh now, as Jordan mentioned, you can't really separate the controllers to have like the teeny tiny and sized ones. But hey, you can also do some of those. Just uh, grab some of the teeny tiny Bluetooth controllers off whatever website you like to shop your electronics at and uh, make them fit. Hey, man, this is like one of the times uh, I was debating whether or not we should throw this on our Wednesday show, Pedro. Mm-hmm. Because this is the first time, not the first time, but first time in recent memory that I've seen a pie project. I was like, shit, somebody needs to make me one of those for um, Doctor yeah. Who Day. Mm. And it is a really good use of a Raspberry Pi, although this one is much more uh, hands-on. Because he had to go in and do all the wiring and do all the soldering and everything. And it is massive and it's relatively small package. There is a lot of stuff in there. And kudos to Tim. Massively small package. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Kudos to him because that looks really neat. Oh, yeah. It's 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 super cool. But coming up next, we go now. Get to the chopper. Ah, You you, you, you like that alien versus predator requiem deep cut? No. No one did. Oh shit! I wasn't prepared for this at all. Ah! Ah! Well, that, that that was basically my excuse for flying around in a helicopter. This is Hellborn from uh, Jetcat Games. It's developed on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for around fifteen pounds twenty uh, U.S. dollars or five hundred thousand Canadian dollars. <laughs> what is it? Get behind the cockpits of the best helicopters in the world. Play from the classic machines of the 1950s to the modern gunships of the 21st century. Play missions with your friends and compete with players from all around the world in various multiplayer modes. And, of course, the devs did send us some keys for that. Thanks a lot, Jet Cat Game. So this is the chair qa edition where we uh, take a look at some games that people send us and maybe give them some, uh, put them through the ringer, give them some QA that they may have not gone through before going to release on Steam or whatever other service you got. So we rate them all with chairs. One chair means that it's crap. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. And four chairs means it's so good. I have to get closer to the camera. We also got our categories of doom mixed with the working shiny sounds controls and fun. So we do it in a bit of a round table these days. So Pedro, how did this work? 
Actually, it worked reasonably well. It was very glaringly Unity because the moment you start it, you get the dark blue screen of nope. Uh, and it, 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 it has the, it's the Unity bloop a noop. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you very much. it has that nasty tendency of just spawning in the wrong screen all the goddamn time, even though I went into the prefs file and I set it to spawn on the active screen. And it just fucking doesn't. But then again, that's Unity nowadays. I just. I don't even care anymore. Is that a common thing? Because I use separate X screens like a sane person. Is Yeah, no. If you have like the extended X desktop or twin view, like NVIDIA called it a while back, it, yeah, it does that constantly. Yeah. I, I mean, I was, I was playing this on the laptop with the i760 700 HQ and the 960 M. And oh, and the the only real issue I had with the working was those shader compile times when you just started up. It took forever. Oh, it took was, a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was a little concerned that like the game would just not work. But uh, yeah, I, I, I actually it it did that thing where when you're just about to alt tab and kill it, just before you hit enter, then it shows up, and you're like, God damn mm -hmm. it. Oh, it! It knew it knew what I was doing. Could always be a thing. I, I didn't really have any of those issues. Uh, Separate X screen on the Ryzen 7, 1700, Kubuntu 1710. Nothing to really complain about. Then you really shouldn't, I don't believe, because, I, I mean, you, you could run this, I would dare say, on a calculator and or a low-end mobile device. Yeah, no, it seems, the performance seems to be there. Uh, I haven't actually tried it on the laptop, but it does seem to have a good enough performance on the 1080 i never really saw it drop below 50 at any point so hey yeah on on the nine on the 960m at 720p um it was running at like 150 odd frames a second when i bump it up to 1080p um it would try to maintain about 60 and it would dip to about 47 at the lowest, but it was relatively consistent and above 50 FPS. So but for, a Unity, for a Unity game like this, that's honestly better than what you can expect. Yeah. Right. So um, so if we, if we wanted to attach a chair, I think four is fair for Mix with the Working? Yeah. yeah. Four all, all right. the way around. Four to the floor. Well, at least for Mix with the Working. <laughs> Up next is Shiny and Sounds. Um, so I hope you like hearing... <laughs> Because that's all you're going to be hearing. There's some like generic guitar noodling that uh, that happens. Well, the, so uh, right. I, 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 I would say hit mute and either put on uh, "You Spin Me Right Round" or "Hatred Copter" by Death Clock because you're going to get bored of uh, whatever background music they have going on. You can see that when you launched out in Vietnam, they, they were definitely going for something reminiscent of "All Along the Watchtower." Because I'm sorry, if you fly in a helicopter in fucking Vietnam, that's going to kick in your damn brain. Um, what's it look like? You know what? I, I agree with you, Jordan, man. The, the choppers, the, they, they look legit enough. Not that I'm well-versed, but it's like the, they look good enough to where they... I'm not going to say they stand out, but... But they're, they're, they're visually distinct. You can tell them apart yeah. from one another. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Yeah, They very clearly put all of the visual uh, effort into the helicopter itself. And it makes sense because that's what you're going to have on screen for the biggest part uh of uh the game and there's one thing that really annoyed me which was even at the higher settings the pop-in is very much there you can notice it even if you go into the options menu and you crank the mm -hmm. draw this is all the way up you can see the textures popping in and the moment you realize it you cannot unsee it it's really annoying it is, with, also, with all the foliage, is just constantly like... Yeah. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And the soldier, like, the animations oh, of the oh. soldiers running, that is so bad. It's like, the, okay, so... The, the, the soldiers are the worst, because you'll... you'll 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 be flying to something, and then bullets will start shooting at you, and then, like, a good five seconds later, oh, hey, here's the little blue things that you can shoot at. And so, inevitably, they get some cheap shots at you. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there was times you were like, where the fuck are they coming? I mean, it was, I, I guess on the realism simulator scale, maybe that was a thing. But you're like, well, all right, if you're going to show me these blue dots, do it consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Abs the, absolutely. I guess uh, going on with the aesthetics thing, the sounds, they're, they're rather meh. 
Oh, 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 also, also one, one, one thing that I really noticed once I jacked the quality up to 1080p because I was playing it at 720p on Thursday mm-hmm. was um, the, 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 the level thing that controls your, uh, your pitch or whatever mm-hmm. um, or that indicates your pitch or whatever uh, and, and, and your speed. Um, when you have uh, when you when you're in like the Afghanistan area where there's a lot of like white and lens flare, you cannot see where the hell it is. Mm-hmm. You cannot you cannot read it, period. And that is that is very problematic, especially when you're about to crash into some mountains. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get to that in the control section. <laughs> yeah, aesthetically speaking, it's nothing to write home about. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, I, I, I would say probably about, about two chairs across. Would you yeah. agree? So I'm going to say two because that basically means, listen, every, everything worked. Everything made noise. This was, uh, I don't think, visually impressive. But then again, I mean, this is a game basically geared for online multiplayer and uh, it, it looks a little bit mobile-ish but I, I still think there's a lot of room to grow but functionality everything worked right yep okay all right <laughs> all right so how, how how about them controls then so uh, this particular brand of nightmare fuel you got to experience first on Thursday when you had the bright fucking yeah. idea to break out your areola controller. When I had the bread, when I had the bread idea, it's not by a mouse on the way home from work. Also yes, also yes on that. Um, I, I initially just started playing with it continuously for that streaming session. I was just using Waz to my gerbil. No issue right there. Nothing to complain about. Um, yeah, and then, and, then, and then you got introduced to the world of my pain. <laughs> well, I, I attempted to use it because I was curious. You know, I do like torturing myself. And uh, Frenchie picked me up the uh, areola yep. controller for the sole purpose of causing me physical pain. And it's like, well, I want him to get his money's worth out of it. Yeah, fuck that nightmare. Um, I, I tried well, it. With and um, yeah no no mm-mm. Mm-hmm. no yeah. they, they they have they have some community presets for it but they and like the the, the buttons are mapped out sanely but just the the physical action of controlling it does not work mind you I went and bought this little cheap ass mouse for five euro and um, yeah all of a, all of a sudden the game becomes a lot more playable when mm-hmm. you can actually control the choppa. Yeah, in the simple control mode, because they have like the simple control modes and the advanced control modes, I guess if you have a big ass joystick. Uh, I used to have one of those stupidly expensive Logitech ones. Don't know where it is, but it probably still exists somewhere. Uh, if you don't have that, you probably want to be playing in the simple control mode. And if you are the mouse and keyboard, they actually let you control your helicopter reasonably well it takes a little getting used to but it's just a little uh on thursday after just a few minutes of being in game my brain sort of clicked it's it something like, oh. you can pick up but here's a question for you man is because this is straight up arcade there, there's no attempt mm-hmm. at simulation any fucking thing in this oh yeah and <laughs> why, well why it's, the it's, effort it's... why the effort to like, get the whole joystick. No, nobody's going to be playing this with their fucking foot pedals and shit, man. I'm, <laughs> all right. I, I'm sorry. Not. Somebody no. out there is like, oh, I've no, been playing no. this. And, and con- controlling the helicopter is proper. Basically, uh, as, as I learned the hard way, it controls like an actual helicopter. So you got to actually control your pilt titch and yaw. And you got you to you gotta tilt forward in order to accelerate forward. And if you tilt backwards, you go into reverse. And you can sort of control the acceleration and deceleration with the uh, W and S keys, as it were. Uh, but either way, you're going to end up crashing into some shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh, every now and again, you'll get very intimately acquainted with the side of a mountain. Because you'll start to feel like you're actually in control and you're doing some swooping passes, just going sideways the whole time and hitting exactly what you want to. And then a mountain shows up out of nowhere and boom. So, yeah, it's uh, it is. I have absolutely no complaints about the single uh, the simple ah, <clears throat> simple controls, but it, it, it does take some getting used to. Yeah, there's definitely that. I don't think this was ever, I mean, this game personally to me never struck me as something to be played with a controller. Um, 
if if you're brave enough and persistent enough, <laughs> listen, here's the thing about a steam controller. You can probably do it, yeah. You can do it. You could well, sit and map it to something that would actually work and be playable. I don't have that damn time. Uh, Jordan? Yep. Yeah. Do you want to put a bow on that segment? I, I mean, sure. I, 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 it kind of sounded like you had additional stuff to add to the mm-hmm. end of that sentence. But anyways, I give it three chairs. Y'all gave it four. So we're going to average that out to three for the controls. And finally, since you're the only one who really seemed to like it, Pedro, you can you can start off the fun segment. Yeah, I genuinely didn't hate it. Now, while we were playing the game on Thursday, uh, Jordan, you mentioned that the similar uh, you mentioned the similarity between what we were doing, basically going around, setting down, uh, dropping some soldiers off, coming back up, then going to another place. It was similar to Windward. And that kind of started my brain on little. Well, it, it's well, what, what I was specifically referring to was that mode in Windward where you're basically running around doing the capture and control thing, yeah. which is that that sort of arena combat yeah. mode. Because because mm-hmm. you, you, well, you what you're going into, I, I read your thing ahead of time. You're you're right. There is the windward has a lot more emphasis on the stuff surrounding the ship combats, about yep. establishing trade routes and so on and so forth. I was specifically referring to that one aspect of the game. Yeah, and I do agree with you, and that that's kind of what's kickstarted my brain into that whole thing, because. Hellborn is the opposite of Windward in that sense, because Windward, uh, the combat and the transportation bits and the whole capturing the villages, they're equally uh, they're all equally important. But in Hellborn, the combat is where the focus is. And well, in our case on Thursday, it was basically the focus was actually on being able to maneuver the helicopter around while still hitting the targets as we were. Uh, the, like dropping off soldiers and picking up, picking up the wounded soldiers, they're mostly secondary unless the, uh, mission that you're playing specifically requires it. Uh, and I guess, uh, this one is not as open world as Windward was, uh, because this one is very much, you do a mission, you have this teeny tiny map and that's it. On Windward, you do have more of that open world type of thing. Mm. Ben? So, man, check this out. I I would have said two, like, straight up, it's functional. I could understand playing it with some friends and all that. But I'm, uh, I gotta say, you gotta have a bad time because really, the only way you're going to have a really decent, keep counting how many times I say really here, because I'm trying to kind of be polite. Really? Really? Mm -hmm. Like, really, try to keep track. Um, (laughs) You would have fun. We had fun. Of course, we we can play basically anything, and we're we're going to drill some fucking entertainment value out of it. Usually, the more yeah. fucked up and hell, hell, it we, is. we we got some out of Secret of the Magic Crystals multiplayer. Th- this is true. If you go back and watch the entire stream, you, you're just seeing the uh, parts where we weren't sitting, trying to figure out how the fuck do you start an online game. I mean, the yeah. UX design of this game actually has cost it a chair in my opinion. And that's what it did because it is not fucking clear what you're supposed to do, how you set up a squadron. And I I know, yes, you opened it the first time and everything was perfectly clear to you because you're smarter than I am. (laughs) Sure. Just like, uh, that's why we named it. uh, We suck at Mr. High IQ (laughs) on the, um, videos. Cause we, I think we got like two or three comments on that stream because a lot yeah, of people aren't yeah, playing yeah. this and you could def- definitely tell that they wanted to dog some shit be like you don't know what you're doing but they were also smart enough to realize the series is called we suck at so like mm-hmm. oh they didn't want to be that guy um no, they single player the link to like the uh steam community guide for the game on how you get the base that's another going. problem pedro i mean when your tutorial yeah. is based on the steam community guide because you just walk into this, you think you're going to sit down. Hey, man, I've been playing PC games for 30 plus years. Go to 30 for a curveball. Is there single player at it? Yes, technically there is. You're not going to have fun with it if you do something is wrong with you. Yeah. Unfortunately, with the multiplayer, unless you have a crew with people together, uh, the actual 
community right now. I'm not speaking out of turn. It's kind of dead, Pedro. Yeah, it is. Admittedly, there aren't a whole lot of people playing this game online, and that's actually one of its biggest shortcomings, because going back to Windward, uh, Windward, teeny tiny game as it is, very bare bones in its implementation, it still has quite a few people playing it. This one just Okay, it had a few servers while we were playing, but you go in at certain times a day, and it's just dead. Mm. Now, well, uh, I, here, here, here's here's one thing though. Uh, bring bring bringing it back to sort of the the whole windward thing. There there's there's very much a simulation aspect to this game. I, so much so that I would actually probably chalk it up in the sim, or I would chalk the game in the simulation category. And like if. That's the thing. If you're if you're like an amateur drone pilot, or you're like you're into RC helicopters, or you're a military history buff, this it seems like you might get a kick out of this game. But the gameplay itself was down to capture and control mode from Windward, mm-hmm. with more awkward controls than Russians, <laughs> and that, and and that's it. And if and I'm sure all the helicopters are super cool for all the enthusiasts and whatnot, but this does nothing for me. I'm I'm sitting there. With my with my mouse in one hand and my dick in another, trying to figure out which one's more entertaining, and <laughs> I think I I, th- I think you know the answer to that question. Yeah, I for me it I enjoy it the same way that I enjoyed American Truck or Euro Truck Simulator. It's about the driving, or in this case, flying. For me, it, that's the catharsis of successfully navigating the helicopter and pulling off a tricky landing while under fire and then taking off after the soldiers are done and they're doing their thing. I really enjoyed just, you know, starting Helleborn and picking one of the longer missions and just flying around doing those tricky landings. In I that respect, I can fly. <laughs> it is, uh, it is, it tickles that part of my brain where the catharsis, the feeling of catharsis lives. <laughs> well, I think you're right. Uh, it's definitely not a deep game. It's a pickup fuck around game. This is yeah, not something it is. right. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I've just been entertaining myself throughout this entire review just watching people crash into fucking mountainsides. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, no. In that respect, uh, the catharsis is really good. But then again, games like Windward don't really cost 20 bucks. So, and yeah, so, I mean, Ven, you, you, you and I would agree it kind of falls into like the one chair category. When it comes to fun, man, if I'm just being honest, this is not something I ever plan on revisiting. I just don't think there's enough there. If I got to say what I got to say, it's definitely going to be the, I'm going to drag this back out. If you'd give me this and say, hey man, this is our prototype. This is our early access game. It's like doing all right. Pretty good job. I think Maddie pointed out there's a bunch of DLC. It seems to be cosmetic, therefore I could kind of consider that harmless. Um, yeah, it's not pay to win. Good on that, but it doesn't feel like a big game. And they're rolling out, you know, the latest update, which we covered earlier in the show. If you're just watching this cut out by a standalone, go back and watch it. They're changing like core mechanic changes post release and. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know if that's going to be able to retain the community, what community there is when you do things like that. So I hope it does evolve into something better because you you could probably make a fun, just fuck around game for somebody to walk in and pick up and play with. But this, this isn't it. Not right now. No, no. So I, I, I I think all in all, it's going to get one chair for the, for the fun category. Mm. Yeah, but even though it, I liked it, uh, it is uh, you got you got outvoted. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> so that tallies all up to a two chair. It gets Lestrider. Two chairs. Not sure if want. Like I said, if you're into like military simulation or helicopters or like military history or anything like that, I think you would actually get a kick out of this game. Um, if you're just looking for a game that's like sort of enjoyable uh, from like a walk in, pick up and play experience, mm. this is not it. No, and that's all we can say about it. It passes QA in the fact that it runs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And after we managed to work around the user uh, interface, user experience, whatever you want to call it, you can't actually find your friends because they are they are highlighted in green. Mm-hmm. So, and they did put some thought into it. <laughs> 
Yeah. So coming up next, we talk about the good kinds of cholesterol versus the bad kinds of cholesterol and what happens when you really put the pedal to the metal. Well, it's the end of the show. You know what time it is. It's the time that you get to scream in our direction. That's right. If you want to scream at us, go to LongEscapeCast.com, hit the contact button. It's pretty easy. Just fill out the form. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little drop down thing. It's pretty self-explanatory at that point. Uh, just make sure to pick uh, the LGC Weekly. Or if you'd like some relationship advice from our resident Finnish Canadian, you can also uh, pick that one and send your questions, suggestions, whatever. Yeah, uh, you may have just uh, send him his way, and I'm sure he'll have something very um, informative to say. Uh, M- I may- maybe. <laughs> I, 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 you, you, you gotta, you gotta find out. If you, if you give me shitty questions, I'll give you shitty answers. If you give me good <laughs> questions, I, w- I will give you an answer. <laughs> no promises. It'll be good. But uh, Mr. Punk Ass Fuck, I'm not kidding, that's his name, uh, had something to say about our F1 review last week. He's, he's, said, he's talking about the GURP. Yep. He, um, way more GURP in F1 2017. First gear isn't as obnoxious as before. Uh, always spinning rear wheels no matter what. If I had manual control over gears, I wouldn't shift it in first at all. That's how bad it is. AI seemed faster compared to previous version, faster lap times. I think they make more mistakes now, too. In the rain, it's automatic loose for me, uh, while AI drive with perfect traction. That's the wrong loose there. You meant lose with one O. Maybe, maybe he was talking about loose. Maybe, maybe he's put loose. <laughs> Take off your Sunday shoes. Hey, man, that could definitely know. be his thing, but that's definitely in response to us going, uh, we couldn't really tell the difference because we suck at the game and uh, oh, yeah. we, we don't know a lot about <laughs> F1 other than you drive the car around and you slam into a wall. The, 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 <laughs> pretty much. Uh, or, or, and you saw me spin out a couple of times. Or is anyone watching this week? So, hey. so, basically, if you took uh, F1 cars and replaced them with helicopters, we basically had the same review twice. <laughs> you basically could. Uh, I mean, if you paid attention this week, we'd like to call it the Lewis Hamilton. Um, <laughs> some people will get that. Uh, that's cool. I, I would really like to play an F1 game or, you know, F1 2017 in one of those, like you see them at the giant malls and stuff like that, like the full car simulator where the motion mm-hmm. is. I, I could add, I I could spend a day fucking around at one of those Yeah, with multiplayer. But at home, without the wheels and the pedals... I would never get, again, I, I just got to say, I couldn't get that involved in mastering, controlling the motoring vehicle with a controller because like it's, that's, that's not right. That boy needs therapy. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, coming up next um, from Georgie, because we all float down here. Um, he, he's asking about Easter eggs or Easter egg. Um, I found this out of place tooltip on the site and I thought I should report it. And he gave us a little Imgur link to, um, the, the, you know, the Desura site at the bottom of our page. Yeah. Desura.com. You can find it at (laughs) Lutris.net. Yeah, no, it's Desura. You know that Desura is dead, right? So might as well. No. Hey man, Lutris lives in in our hearts. Um, yeah, no, Lutris equals Desura confirmed. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. The Sura OS or Lutris OS, whatever you want to call it, just, yeah, it's a thing. It's there. <laughs> hey, man, uh, I'll say this is something I pointed out to Pedro. And uh, also to George, I went back and corrected it. Oh? Heavy hair quotes around that one. Yeah, well, uh, um, I, I fixed it because you, <laughs> you, 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 you reminded me that, fuck, I got tooltips? Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> yeah, there's still tips. Go figure. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been changed now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't say... It doesn't give you the, the sort of spiel when you mouse over the losers thing. Mm-mm. It's been crazy. Uh, need, 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 needless to say, we have a bit of egg on our face. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, like it's a bad thing. Apparently. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, I, I, th- I, th- I think that does it. Are, 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 we, are we done? We got anything else we got to scream at the lovely people? Uh, anything they, they want to scream at us? Get back to us next week. Come check us out Wednesday. It'll be brilliant because on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us uh, 930 Eastern Standard Time unless we do it early, which might happen because it looks like Jordan's falling the fuck apart on us. Um, you can get a hold of me at Vinstone on Twitter plus Vinstone. Just type in Vinstone somewhere unless it's being because that'd be nasty. I'm Jordan Spung. You can find various pieces of me disassembled. You might be able to put me back together like a Mr. Potato Head at The Burning Pool on Twitter, plus Jordan Spung on Google+. And you can find me basically just being a whole lot of nope in whatever social media you happen to frequent, except maybe Facebook. I haven't been there in a while. You can probably find me at unaccounted for on Twitter and most definitely find me plus Peter Mateos on Google Plus. So outside of learning that uh, even like new Skype, which we were forced, we were trying to use Discord. It was even rougher than fucking Skype. But new Skype is a butt. You suck, Microsoft. I mean, we already knew that, but you were just like, just in case, boom, elbow drop on us, right? Yeah, it's the Macho Man Randy Savage flying elbow drop. We got, uh, there, there's no way to resist. We apologize. If you yeah. made it through this far, we, we apologize. But we also thank you for putting up with this insanity. Next week, we should, uh, fuck, I'm not going to jinx myself. Slight, marginally better next week, guaranteed. No, you next still week, sound better. Next... There it goes. No, it's ne- just dead. No, 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 no. Listen, next week, we will have cables. Well, there will be noodles. Let's have some cables. <laughs> cables everywhere. Cables, cables everywhere, but not a drop to drink. <laughs> oh, shit. We made it through it. I, 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 uh, I, I, listen. I, we made it, guys. Everyone involved. Everyone who showed up for the live stream. Yeah. We, 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 rec- we recorded a show. Yeah, there, there was a show, and it was brought to you by the lovely people currently uh, floating all over your face that you can see. Look at them. Look at all of them. George Lucas is not going to sue us. <laughs> just, you, 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 what's good? You, you hear that knocking? That's Mickey Mouse coming to kick our asses. <laughs> Break our Oh, shins. yeah, Disney owns that shit now. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, we're going to do a brand new trilogy. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I mean, uh, of, of course. Like now, now that it's it's a money making machine, there's no reason why they would stop. I will just say, fucking Star Wars, man. <laughs> I, I I will say, as long as they can keep the quality up, I really don't mind. Um, by all means, rehash everything, all the storylines, everything. Just you know, do more Star Wars. It's 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 fucking Star Wars, man. Yeah, you know you know you know what? Five dudes. <laughs>